All right, this is going to be a review over factoring, one thing that a lot of high school kids hate. And we're going to take this in parts. This is factoring part one. And the first thing I want to do is explain, I want everybody to know exactly what factoring is. So I want you to think back to a simple number like 8. How do we factor 8? And that's a pretty ugly looking 8. Well, the first thing we do is we break it down to oh, 04 times 2. So factoring is basically taking a number and breaking it down to what, another number times another number. That's factoring, but we want to completely factor this, so we still try to factor more. For example, 4 is 2 times 2, and 2 is just 2. And remember, a number is completely factored when it has no more factors other than itself and 1. So we're not going to break down these 2s to 2 times 1. So that's the complete factorization there. You could also factor a number like 10. Again, that would be 5 times 2, and we would be done, because the only factors of 5 and 2 are the numbers themselves and 1. So it's important to understand that factoring is simply taking a number and breaking it down into a number times another number. That's all factoring is. So when we bring into um, polynomials into all this, we have to realize that polynomials are just numbers. For example, 6x cubed minus 4x. This is nothing more than one number. We just don't know what that number is yet until somebody whispers into our ear what x is. For example, if they uh, whisper x is 1, then 1 cubed is 1. 6 times 1 is 6. 4 times 1 is 4. So we get 6 minus 4 is 2. But this is nothing more than one number. So if we want to factor this, we want to break it down. We want to break it down to a number times another number. But because of the x's, it's probably going to be a polynomial times a polynomial, an another polynomial. And when we factor polynomials, we want to break them down as low as we can, preferably to linear factors. Right now, this is a cubic. It is a third degree. We would like to break it down to first degree polynomials. Sometimes it's possible. Sometimes it's not. Obviously, that's the ultimate goal. Just like we broke down 8, 4 times 2, and then we went even further, 2 times 2 times 2. So let's talk about how to factor this one. The first method we're going to use to factor this right here is what we call the removing common factors. Removing common factors. And uh, all we want to do with this method is we want to look at the terms that we have and see if there's anything common, any factors that are common. For example, look at the numbers, 6 and 4. I see something common. I see a 2 that's common. 2 goes into 6 three times. 2 goes into 4 twice. And then also we want to look at the variables, x cubed and x. Now, we can only take out the smallest amount we have. For example, I can't take out an x squared. Um, because there's no, x, there's no x squared back here to take out. There is up here, but not back here. So I can only take out the lowest amount, which would just be a plain old x. So when I took that away, when I take 2 as a factor away from 6, 2 times 3 makes a 6. x cubed, I took one of the factors x away, so I have an x squared left. 4 divided by that 2 that I took out leaves behind a 2, and I took that x out, so there's no more x there. So here we go. We got um, a monomial, 2x, times a binomial 3x squared minus 2. So I took a polynomial and I broke it down to a um, polynomial times another polynomial. That's factoring. Now, like we mentioned before, we would love for them to be linear factors. This first one is linear right here. 2x is a linear. There's a 1 right there on the x, but back here, unfortunately, this 2 is a um, quadratic. That's not linear. So we'll learn sooner or later that actually this can be broken down. It's just a little tricky and kind of ugly, but for right now, that's fine with what we're doing. Let's um, kind of look at another one here. Let's look at a second example with the um, removing common factors. So we got 5x uh, plus 15x to the fourth. So again, we got two terms. It's a binomial, fourth degree. Let's take out some common factors. First off, between 5 and 15, I can take out a 5. And I can only take away an x because this guy just has x. He has four x's, but I can only take away the smallest amount. So I've got to leave a 1 right there. 5 divided by 5 is 1. I took the x away, so there's no more x's there. 15 divided by 5 is 3. And I took one of the x's away, so there's an x cubed left. So again, I took one number. Again, just like 8 and 10, this is nothing more than a number. Just don't know it yet because of the x's. And I broke it down to a monomial 5x times a binomial 1 plus 3x cubed. Um, and we can take a look at one more example here. I'll see if I can squeeze it in down here. Um, we have, actually we're going to do two more examples. Negative 4x squared 
plus 12x minus 16. Again, this is a trinomial now. So let's see if we can break this one down. Let's see, negative 4, 12, 16. I think 4 goes into all of those, yes. So we could take out a 4. Uh, can we take away any x's? Actually, we can't because this guy's got 2, this guy's got 1, this guy back here, this negative 16 doesn't have any x's. So how can I possibly take it away? Again, we're removing common factors. x isn't common be all, between all three terms. So I'm left with a negative x squared a positive 3x, hopefully you see where that comes from, and a minus 4. If you want to always check, just distribute that 4 back through and you'll see all the terms get created. But another thing we like to do here is we don't really like this first term being negative. So when I was in this original problem, I could have taken out a negative 4. Now, that would make this a positive. That would make this 3x a negative. It would make this negative 4 back here a positive. Because look, the negative 4 times the x squared would make the negative 4x squared. Negative 4 times a negative 3x would make a positive 12x. And a negative 4 times a positive 4 makes the negative 16. So sometimes it's important to also look at, out, look at taking negatives out as well. We're actually going to do one more example here because it's a little bit of a weird looking one. But it's x minus 2 times 2x. And then we have plus x minus 2 times 3. This is definitely weird. How many terms do we have here? Well, that's a little bit tricky. Inside of this right here, we have two terms, x and negative 2. But we got to look at the overall picture. We have one term right here and one term right here separated by this plus sign. So it's kind of weird looking. The terms are kind of themselves. This term right here is already factored a little bit. x minus 2 times 2x. This back term right here is also factored a little bit. So we want to look at these two overall terms and hey, we noticed an x minus 2 is common. So we're going to take away that x minus 2. And when we take away the x minus 2 from here, we're left with a 2x. When we take away the x minus 2 from here, we're left with a positive 3. So that is another way of looking at factoring. And that strategy is going to come in handy a little bit later when we factor by grouping. All right, the next factoring technique we're going to look at here is special factoring. And um, a lot of these should be familiar. Some of them very familiar. Others we might have to think a little bit about. First one we have is a difference of squares difference of squares. So hopefully everybody's seen this one before. It's pretty easy. We got a squared minus b squared. So the first thing we need is a difference. Got to be a minus sign. And we need both values to be squares. And when you factor this, you simply get a plus b times a minus b. Very, very easy. If there was a plus sign here, it doesn't work. It's only called difference of squares. So let's take a couple examples here to look at. 1 is 9x squared minus 4. So I recognize it's got a minus sign. I see that 9 is a square. 3 squared is 9. x is being squared. That's important. And 4 is also um, 2 squared. So sometimes if you're beginning to try to understand this, you want to write it out. That's 3x quantity squared. So that would be like my a minus 2 squared. That would be like my b. So 3x squared makes 9x squared. 2 squared makes the 4. So now I just got to take the a, 3x, and the b, 2, and then use my formula here. So 3x plus 2, and then 3x minus 2. Um, if you don't believe me, go and FOIL and see that that is nx, 9x squared minus 4. Um, you don't have to take this middle step right here by any means, but just make sure you understand exactly where those numbers are coming from. Um, we can also look what we call perfect square trinomials. A perfect square trinomials um, is oftentimes a trinomial where the first and last values are squared. So like a squared, and then you got a b squared in the back. In the middle, you're going to have plus 2ab. Or you could also have a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. And when these things factor, you're going to have a plus b times a plus b, signs stay the same, or a minus b times a minus b. And the easiest way to recognize these is the first and last terms are usually squared. So let me show you a quick example here, a couple examples. We got 4x squared minus 20x plus 25. So if I'm looking at this, why do I notice this right away? I know 25 is a perfect square, 4x is a perfect square, or 4x squared is a perfect square. So right away I'm thinking this might be able to work. So I'm going to go ahead and throw a 2x in the front. 
Why? Because 2x times 2x makes the 4x squared. I'm going to throw a 5 in the back. Why? Because 5 times 5 makes the 25. And then I realize I need a minus 20. So I'm going to make both of these minus. And then you'll see where that minus 20x comes from. On the outside right here, the 2x, the negative 5, we've got a negative 10x. On the middle terms right here, on the inside terms, we have another negative 10x, and that, of course, makes the negative 20x right there. So that's another common factoring technique to look at is when you have the perfect squared trinomials. And the next one that we're going to learn is probably the one most of you guys are, are pretty unfamiliar with, and that is two cubes, the difference or, or, or sum of cubes. So we got a cubed plus b cubed, and cubes work a little bit different, so they actually can be subtracted or added so you gotta notice cubes and some of you guys might not recognize cubes as much as you do squares we just gotta get used to it and it's a nice little form you gotta memorize here uh, a plus b or I'm sorry yeah a plus b times a squared minus a b plus b squared for that first one which is a little bit different we got a plus sign you need a minus sign right there and back here we got a minus b times a squared plus a b plus b squared. So it's a little tough to memorize, but hopefully uh, the logic behind it makes sense. a plus b, you got a plus b in front, minus in the back, a minus b plus in the back. So let's do um, an easy one here to recognize. x cubed minus 8. So first thing I recognize is x cubed. Hey, cubes might be working here. Is 8 a cube? Yes, it is actually because 2 cubed makes 8. So that's going to be like my b value. So I got x cubed, that's x being my a, and 2 being my b. So I got uh, x minus 2, and then I got x squared plus multiplying a times b, so that's x times 2 is a 2x, and then b squared, so remember my b value is 2, 2 squared is 4. So it's oftentimes important to really take a look at what is being cubed. This is x being cubed, and this is 2 being cubed, creating that 8. Let's take a look at another one here, a little bit tougher one here. 27x cubed plus 125. So again, you might not recognize these as cubes, but 27 cubed is really 3x all cubed, so that would be my a value, 3 cubed is 27, x cubed is x cubed, and back here, uh, 125 is 5 cubed, so that's acting like my, my b value. So I got 3x plus 5, and then back here I got my a value being squared, I'm following the formula up here, so that would be 3x squared would be 9x squared, then I got minus a times b, that's 3x times 5, is 15x, and then my b squared. Remember, my b value is the 5 right there, so 5 squared is 25. So a little bit tough, a little bit tricky there. Um, some kids don't like those ones, but you got to get used to them. Sorry, that's how it works. The last thing we're going to talk about real quick here is um, when we have to remove common factors and then we can factor more. And I'll do a couple real quick examples. For example, 3 minus 12x squared. So first thing I'm going to do is, that's a 12x squared, sorry. First thing I'm going to do is take out a 3, because I notice the 3 is common. So I'm going to get 1 minus 4x squared. Then I recognize this back part is a difference of perfect squares. So that's going to be 1 minus 2x times 1 plus 2x. So I had to take out 3 first, and then I saw what was left over was difference of perfect squares. 1 squared is 1, 2x squared is 4x squared. Um, do another one real quick here. 16x to the 4th minus 81. Um, I'm going to notice that first off, I can take, uh, well, let's see here. What's being squared here? I, I recognize 81 is 9 squared. Oh, this is right here is going to be 4, that's 16, and then x squared squared makes the 16x to the fourth. So 4 squared makes 16, x squared squared makes the x to the fourth. So I'm going to use my, for, my formula here. I got 4x squared plus 9 times 4x squared minus 9. And then I say, whoa, well, wait a minute. I got another difference of squares back here. 4, 9, perfect squares, difference. This first one, unfortunately, is an addition one, so I can't do anything more with that. But this last one here would turn into an easy one, 2x uh, plus 3 and 2x 
minus 3. Again, 3 squared was 9, 2x uh, squared would be the 4x squared. So hopefully you realize that sometimes you got to do a little bit of factoring out first.